Winter 1951. The sky was grey, snow covered the ground. Braunton's valve gear was crunching. The trees were sweat ha hang on. Braunton's valve gear was crunching. Driver, what the hell are you doing to me? I haven't heard noises like this since Vaughn's crash. I'm doing nothing. It's your stupid valve gear. Why can't you have normal valve gear like every other engine ever? Don't blame me, blame Mr. Bullied. Anyhow, however much you complain to me, I won't be listening because I'm in unbearable pain! We'll stop at the next station and I'll take a look. Braunton came to a stop at Wantage where his crew got off his footplate and inspected his valve gear. By the time they completed their checks, a large group of angry passengers had gathered by Braunton's cab. They all complained to his driver and fireman. This has happened once too many times this week. May I suggest using another locomotive? One that won't fail every five minutes? One that'll actually run at some sort of speed, that means we can get to Stober this decade. I don't see the point in building that extension to Fort Stomach if your main express engine isn't even guaranteed to get there. I am well aware that this locomotive is obviously not up to standard, and I can only apologise. Wanton's driver kicked his casing. Ouch! However, I am happy to say that I can reveal to you now that Braunton here is to be rebuilt. Excuse me? Shush! What does that mean? He'll be rebuilt to become more reliable and stuff. And stuff? You don't sound very confident about that. Oh, I can assure you that what I'm saying is 100% false. My stupid driver lied from his teeth to the passengers. I can't believe it. They all think I'm off to be rebuilt to a more reliable design. Of all the bumbling fools. And to add to that, I'm still in unbearable pain! Perhaps they should think about rebuilding you. I mean, look at you. Pretty ugly. You're not helping! I always thought that your chain-driven valve gear was a pretty silly idea myself. What's wrong with conventional valve gear, eh? It's certainly less expensive. Think of all that lubrication oil. I can't help the way I was designed! Gah! Foster Val had been working in his study at his newly built summer house outside the new Stobra station. He had the window open and could hear the raised voices of Braunton and the other engines as they argued about their valve gear. After a while, he couldn't take it any longer, and he strode out of his house and down to the sheds. He arrived, and the engine suddenly turned respectfully silent. What the hell is going on out here? I'm trying to complete some very important paperwork, and all I can hear is you arguing. These two seem to think my valve gear is a silly idea and it's not worth the trouble. Well, it would be fine if it didn't cause you any pain. Pain? Is something the matter, Braunton? Well, y you see, sir, I... I... Braunton has been having pains in his valve gear for a little while now, and today it culminated in him having to stop at Wantage on the flyer today. Stan, you weren't going to say anything! Is this true, Braunton? If it is, this is a very serious case. Is there anything else you might want to tell me? I tell him what your driver said to the passengers if I were you. Oh yeah, my driver, the bumbling idiot, made up some stupid story about how I'm going to be rebuilt to be more reliable. He said that, did he? He and I will have words. For now, you will be pulled off the Stovel Flyer. Stan can take it for the moment. I'll have to see what I can do. Can you help Arthur by taking workmen down to Fort Stomouth to help finish the work off down there? You can run at lower speeds, so you shouldn't have too much of a strain. Yes, sir. With that, Lord Stavell walked away back to his study, an idea planted in the back of his mind. 
When he was gone, Stan burst with excitement. Ha! I get to pull the subtle flyer in your face. Oh, shut up! In your face. You can have my nightmare if you're looking for more prestige services to steal. Nah, you're alright. I'm happy with my sleeping pattern at the moment, thanks. Nah, never mind. Right, you horrible lot. I'm going to sleep before you guys wrangle me into swapping services too. The other engines laughed as Arthur fell asleep. They chatted a bit more before also falling asleep. The next morning, Stan woke early to be prepared for his first run on the Subtle Flyer. Jack was already shunting the consist around, and it was ready in one of the platforms for him to take away. Arthur woke and stirred Braunton into action a little while later. Come on, Braunton. Time to start collecting the workmen. <sighs> Alright, I'm coming. Give me a sec. Arthur hurried away to the freight sidings where he picked up a long train of trucks and briskly started away towards Fort Stoma. Braunton ran around to the head of his train that Jack had prepared for him. The workmen all climbed aboard and he started off. He'd never been this way before. He was relatively new and the only engines that had been this way were Arthur and Earl. The line was not open for public use yet, but as he climbed into the mountains, he passed signal boxes and saw some stunning scenery. He was stopped in Fulbrook Station where more workmen hurried on board the train. He continued through the tunnel and then descended the long sweeping bank towards Eldridge. Here he let the workmen off and was surprised to find out he would not be going any further. Driver, why aren't we continuing to Fort Stomuth? This is where our workmen are needed. Remember, Fort Stomuth is quite a large town. It's got enough workmen to cover that area. So, what are we going to do now? We're staying here now. You might as well get some sleep. Me and your fireman are heading up to that cafe over there for some breakfast. We'll let you know if anything comes up. I think I can deal with that. Oh, before I forget, how is your valve gear feeling now? Surprisingly okay. It was a bit painful earlier coming up from Stobra to Fulbrook, but it's alright now. Well, that's okay then. Give us a shout if anything changes, okay? Sure thing. Broughton's driver, now happy that Broughton was okay, joined his fireman on the platform and they walked along to the cafe. Morton simmered happily and dozed in the early morning sun. He was only disturbed by Arthur heading back up towards Stober with his empty trucks later in the morning. Soon, it was time for him to take some of the workers back to Stober. He ran round his train and pulled it into the opposite platform and waited for the off. While shunting around, he'd felt a pain start to creep back in his valve gear. Arthur passed through the station, whistling as he went. Braunton then got the right away, and he was off. He was worried. He had a long climb of 1 in 100 to get up from the standing start. He wondered if his valve gear could hold. Driver, my valve gear is starting to hurt again. Right, we'll take it steady. Braunton forced his way up the hill. He thought he'd actually make it, but suddenly his pain grew to an unbearable level and suddenly a large clanging noise was heard, and he felt his chain snap. Ah! Jesus Christ on a bicycle. Are you okay, lad? What do you think? Bronson's driver quickly shut off steam and applied the brakes. He jumped out and saw a mass of chains and oil covering the track. That's torn it. This is a bad time to make puns. Y yes, uh, I'm sorry. We'll call for help right away. Bronson's fireman ran down the hill to the signal box at Eldridge to call for help. The only engine in the area was Arthur. They arrived as soon as possible and ran up to the front of Bronson's train. I came as soon as I could, Bronson. Are you okay? I feel terrible. I can imagine. Let's get you back to Stobra. The sooner we're there, the sooner you can be fixed. Bronson could only grunt his thanks as Arthur called him up the incline and back towards Stobra. They arrived, dropped the workmen off, and ran into the shed where Lord Savelle was waiting. How are you, Bronton? 
I've had better days. Yes, I can imagine that. I'm going to take a look underneath to see if there's any more damage. Lord Stavell checked inside Braunton and came out looking very sorry. Looks like you've well and truly mucked up your insides there, Braunton. It's not going to be an easy repair. You happen to be in luck, however. I've been working on a design for a little while now, and last night I stayed up the whole night to adapt it to you. You're going to be rebuilt, just like your driver said. It's going to take a while, but by the time we're done with you, you'll be a different engine. Do you like the sound of that? Oh, very much, sir. It sounds like just what I need. Excellent. If Arthur takes you into the workshop now, the workmen can get to work. Arthur, once you're done, you'll need to collect your wagons at Fort Stonewith and then come back. That'll be your day done for now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Arthur shunted Thornton into the workshop before heading back down the line, collecting his trucks and returning later in the evening. By then, Stan and the rest of the engines were in the sheds. They were surprised to see Arthur return without Braunton. Okay then, what have you done with Braunton? I've done nothing. He managed to finally break his stupid valve gear this afternoon. Lord Savelle says he's being redesigned or something, so he's in the workshop. Redesigned? What a lying cow! He said his driver was lying. Apparently Lord Savelle has been designing an engine for a little while now. He's just adapted the design for Braunton. So we'll see what he looks like when he's finished, I guess. Better be more reliable. I'm sure he will be, Stan. With that, the engine's bedded down for the night, awaiting what the next day would bring without Braunton. Jesus Christ on a bicycle. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Um, <clears throat> Au revoir.